Morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome to this morning's Light Bites episode. So uh, this morning, we're going to be looking at um, uh, the Marlebone Hotel as a case study uh, for lighting design. So those of you who haven't met me before, I'm Luke Thomas. I'm the design director at John Cullen Lighting, and we're running this Light Bites uh, series um, to educate everybody on how you can use lighting within various different spaces, um, giving you some of our uh, top tips and tricks, um, and an insight into how we actually design our projects. Um, so today's case study will be um, a really good example um, of that, um, and definitely be some uh, really uh, juicy inside information. Just wanted to start um, with a thank you um, before we get any further um, to the people involved in this project um, who worked with us um, and probably frankly did a lot more work on the project than we did. Uh, Michaelis Boyd were the architects and interior designers. Um, they're based in Kensington just by Notting Hill uh, Gate Station. Um, we do quite a few projects with them. Uh, they're a really great team to work with. Um, and were very inspirational on this project. Um, also the hotel owners, the Doyle Collection, um, this is th their project um, and they were the ones to appoint us um, and get us involved. PSC Associates were the quantity surveyor and De Boulay were the main contractor. So it was really good team um, that we worked with on the project um, to uh, deliver the successful um, end results. So just to give you uh, an idea of what the, uh, the space that we're looking at here. So the Marlebone Hotel obviously um, is in Marlebone, um, and we're not looking at the hot whole hotel. Um, we're just going to focus in on the area that we were um, brought in to uh, redesign uh, the lighting for, uh, and that area is called uh, Number Six. It's um, an area which is uh, hired out. Uh, it's a private function space uh, consisting of sort of two main spaces really. Uh, first of all, you've got the conference rooms. So the brief here was that the lighting had to be very flexible because uh, the seating arrangement um, was uh, going to be changeable. So sometimes it would be, um, as shown in the sketch here, lots of tables all pushed together. Um, other times it could be um, separated out into more smaller um, lunch tables. Um, so the lighting had to be uh, able to work around that. Um, and also this should be a space where um, those working in a more corporate environment could really escape that um, and come to a more creative um, space which could let ideas flow a little bit more easily. Um, and then also to give a, a seamless transition between uh, day and night and obviously the lighting very important to that. The second space is the cocktail lounge and this was sort of your welcoming area and also the breakout space where people could go to after the meetings um, just to chill out. So it had to be relaxed and welcoming, uh, really atmospheric. Um, and uh, like other areas of the hotel, you had this sort of smoldering atmosphere, um, which was really important to uh, retain. So the lighting is very important to that. So I'm gonna take you through um, a couple of the different areas here and the main features within the space and just show you how we've lit them um, and give you some tips around that. So first of all, I'm gonna start here uh, in the cocktail lounge and a very dramatic library bookcase. So this is the elevation that uh, we started out with uh, from Michaelis Boyd. So they've sketched this up um, and we wanted to try and work out the best way to to highlight it. Um, so what we decided to do and um, proposed was to backlight this um, with an LED strip. Um, so you have a silhouette effect um, on all of the joinery here. And the fact that you had these diagonal crossing lines um, was a really interesting feature we thought. And the back of this is wood, um, so you'd get a really nice warm glow from this. Let me just switch to the final result here and you can see this in practice. So there you can see the glow of the light um, behind each of the shelves. I'm just gonna put my laser pointer on. So you can see here the glow of light behind the shelves. So really subtle and dramatic. Um, it creates this um, quite mysterious environment. Um, and we are lighting the front of the, each of these bookcases as well. You can see in the ceiling, it's a very small and discreet uh, directional uh, downlight. 
um, just to give a wash over the front here as well. That's important because that will light the spines of the books uh, and the front surfaces here and then reflect light back into the room as well. Let me just switch between those two scenes as well because I was quite proud how I lined those up so accurately. So you can see from design through to completion, um, all the details were covered um, and uh, the end result was pretty much as designed with a few minor tweaks. Um, so just to show you here quickly um, how we've created the detail there. Um, the shelf you can see um, is floating away from the back surface um, and the back wall um, and that allows space for the light to diffuse here and then glow up either side. So this sort of effect is great um, if you wanted to create a dramatic lighting effect. Um, obviously it doesn't uh, give you any light onto the objects on the shelves themselves um, but just provides you a nice um, dramatic illumination. So the fittings we've used there are Contour HD24 and the 15TL profile. You could even use the, the shallower version of this profile as well. One thing you've got to be careful of here is um, the finishes that are being used within the bookcase. Um, so the back surface here, if that was going to be um, a lacquered veneer or a mirror or something like that, then this effect isn't going to work uh, particularly well because you're going to just see a reflection um, of the light source. Um, the gap at the back here um, is around 30 to 50 millimeters, depending on how much space that you have uh, available. Um, often when you're installing a bookcase like this, there are some <clears throat> space limitations um, as to what is available because if you're creating a gap at the back here, then obviously potentially your shelf becomes a little bit smaller and you want to make sure that you can still fit uh, some books on there. So that was one of the main features of the, of the whole space, really, really dramatic. Um, next, we're going to move over to this um, concealed drinks cabinet. So on the sketch view here, it's actually slightly out of view um, because it's on the reverse side of this wall here. But that's the location within the space. Uh, here we have the, the concept elevation from Kalis Boyd. Um, so because this was, was part of one of the meeting spaces um, and you, we wanted the lighting to be flexible, uh, same was true of the drinks cabinet, it wouldn't be appropriate to have this open for uh, a meeting. Um, but where the meeting spaces turn into more event spaces in the evenings, you want this to become uh, part of the room and open it up slightly. So you had these huge doors, um, lots of fluted glass, um, which uh, reflect and refract the light. Um, which created lots of interesting effects. You can see there when it's open up, you get a very dramatic effect. Um, and again, I've got here for you the final um, image of what we've achieved. Um, so here with it closed and they're opened up. So what we've done here is you've got these different shelves here and each shelf on the top is a frosted glass uh, and we've created a light box here. So we have a light source concealed within, which shines up through the glass uh, and creates this nice soft glow. So one thing to look out for here is the type of glass that you're, you're using. Um, it's quite important to test maybe with some samples of the proposed materials. Some glass um, can be quite green in color. Um, here you want a, a white glass, uh, so low iron, and that will give you a nice warm white effect. Um, the green glass can obviously tint and alter the lighting effect and you could end up with quite an insipid color. So quite important there to test the materials which you're using. Uh, on the shelves here at the back, um, we also had um, an LED strip concealed um, and above as well. So the idea of that is it's set very close to the mirror and then it skims up and it's got a small baffle in front of it. Um, to conceal it from view. In the ceiling, you've got three little spotlights there, four little spotlights rather. So with glass, um, if you want to create a sparkle effect, you really need something which um, can focus the light and uh, push it directly down onto an object um, to enhance uh, the sparkle of the, the crystal or the glass that you're using. So you really need a, a down light to create that sort of effect for you. If you use just LED strip, it can seem a little bit flat. So there you can see how the doors open and close. So to allow for flexibility between different functions. 